That's Amore. Sam. 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 Robert Lee Gregg is on the move. John and Susan tell them to a bar on 17th. We've got audio feed in the conference room. Uh -huh. You still have visual contact with Gregg? No. Has he moved away from the front of the bar? There he is. We got him. With the blonde guy. It's amazing how close your profile came to describing him physically. Well dressed, slightly overweight. Looks like everyone's favorite uncle. Well, everyone's favorite uncle isn't suspected of butchering six people. Susan, describe Greg's body language. Does he seem nervous or ill at ease? The kid seems more nervous than he does. Is he moving away from Greg? Is he rejecting him? No. Yes, wait a second. He's uh, walking away, gesturing, looking angry. Any kind of rejection could set him off. He just grabbed the guy. You need backup, John. You didn't have to say all those mean things. I only wanted to be nice to you. Hold it! Get your hands in the air! Get him up! You got him? Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Robert Lee Gregg, you're under arrest. Well, we... We were only talking. What's that, huh? The icebreaker? Put your hands on your head. Agent Malone, if there's one thing I'm sure of, Robert Lee Gregg killed those men. And I think he did it somewhere in this house. Agent Marshall, as of now, he's only been charged with assault. And until last night's incident, we didn't have probable cause to search. I spent six months developing this case, sir. It fits Dr. Waters' profile in every significant aspect. And her batting average makes her a shoe-in for Cooperstown. But so far, no weapons, no blood trails. They're here, sir. Greg lived alone, but this whole place, everything, I mean, the chairs, everything is designed for one-on-one -on -one intimacy. You think he killed them here? I don't know if he killed them here, but I, I think he may have entertained them here before he killed them, if he did kill them. Hold it! Was the picture taken before you picked that up? I thought they already I'm not interested in what you thought. Put it back exactly where you got it, make sure a numbered <coughs> photograph is taken. Yes, ma'am. I'll do anything, Susan. There's nothing to do. Why can't we just talk about this? We've talked it to death, Richard. Yeah, it's about him, Mitch, whatever his name is. This isn't about anyone but you and me. I did everything you wanted me to do. I wanted you to get help. Because you still love me. Let go. Richard, listen to me. I will always love you, OK? But we just cannot be together now. Well, I'll just wait for you. I'll, I'll just wait. Old boyfriend. Only went out a couple months. Wasn't going anywhere. I met someone else, but he just won't let it go. He's been following you? Like a puppy. Has he ever followed you on the job before? No. 
What about Hulk? He's not a problem. I won't let him become one. Listen, I don't want Agent Malone to think I can't handle myself in any kind of... You know how hard it is being taken seriously and all, so... Mm. I mean, you managed to do it, having a kid and all. I think that's great. No, yeah, well, I think having a child puts it all in perspective, you know? Take care of yourself. Me too. Human skin. How old? How about a week? Slow born to know. He could have buried the bodies here. Warrant's good for another eight hours. Let's stick up the floor. All right, well, homework first, Chloe. There's no Buffy, all right? All right, love you. Bye bye. Susan Marshall seemed kind of tightly wound to you. Well, it's her first major case. Yeah. At this rate, she'll burn herself out before she gets a second. I should tell you, I already filed a claim against the Bureau. You had a valid warrant to search. To search, not to destroy. And when you removed my client's kitchen floor, what did you find? Well, I had those new boards put in last month because a pipe broke under the floor. We're running a DNA test on the skin we found in those floorboards. It's his home. Isn't it reasonable to assume it's his skin? Is it reasonable to assume your client's molting? I don't like your attitude. I don't like your client. Did it feel good when you killed him? Even the charge of aggravated assault against my client is outrageous. He was in possession of a lethal weapon. He was threatened with bodily injury. He outweighed the guy by, what, 80 pounds? He'll be released from custody within 24 hours. And we'll be on him like white on rice. All right, that's it. This interview is over. Mr. Lawford, please. I want him out of here. It's OK. You're a reasonable man, Agent Malone, as am I. Mr. Gregg's entire life has been about service, dedication to duty. Why don't you tell me about your life, Mr. Gregg? I'm 47 years old, own my own construction business. I enjoy fly fishing. I don't care about his hobbies. I'm more interested in his childhood. Well, it wasn't a happy one. His parents were killed in a car accident when he was five. Series of foster homes. Anything specific on them? Um, let me work on it. Oh, and that background that you asked for on Agent Susan Marshall is a mainframe glitch, so it's just going to take a little longer. Greg's house is a trophy case, an extension of the image that he wants to present to the world, the humanitarian image that he has of himself. And assuming that he's committed these crimes, you think that he wouldn't want to foul the nest with the evidence of them? Yeah, yeah something like that. Mario. Hey, Sam, long time. Who'd have thought we'd be working together, huh? Must be karma. What, you believe in that stuff? Well. Now, it looks like you weren't expecting to see me. No, 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 I... I uh... Hey, the Robert Lee Gregg case, the link between the missing people here in Miami? Yeah, no, I, I was expecting you. I was, of course I was expecting you. Well, it's nice to be expected. Agent Malone. I called your office. They said you were still here. Why? When we didn't find anything under the floor, I was, uh... I don't know. I just kept looking. There's a crawl space up in the attic, but nothing. The warrant has expired. You shouldn't be here. It could jeopardize the case against Greg. I just wanted to make sure. Tell me about Richard Russell. You had a restraining order issued against him. Was he stalking you? No, I wouldn't call it that exactly. What would you call it exactly? You're an FBI agent who felt sufficiently threatened to have an order issued. Sir, he's not a threat. 
He just doesn't want to admit the relationship is over, and the restraining order seemed to be the only way to make the point. Are you aware he has a history of mental instability and has been on heavy medication for the last three years? I didn't know that when I met him, sir, but when I found out, I broke up with him. This house is clean. You can't will those bodies here because they're not. And even if they were, the evidence would be inadmissible because the warrant's expired. That's procedural on the first day at the academy. I know. But you ignored it. And when personal problems affect professional judgment... Sir, I've never let my personal life interfere with my work. If that's true, you'd be the first. The Bureau has people you could talk to about There's this. nothing to talk about, sir. I'm here to do a job. If I've been overzealous, I apologize. But as far as my personal life, I can handle that myself. Handle it. The missing persons in Miami fit uh, the profile of all your MIAs here in Atlanta. Early 20s, good-looking gay. I've been going through Greg's foster home records. I think the key to finding these victims is locked somewhere in his past. Excuse me. Samantha Waters. Hey, Sam, it's John. Yeah. It looks like Greg is going to be released. When? Maybe by tomorrow morning. All right, thanks. You take these? Oh, yeah. Another one of your talents? <laughs> I'm an idiot with a camera. So, uh, this guy you're involved with, the lawyer? Did I say I was involved? You said you were involved. No, I, I think that I said I was sort of in, involved. Was, sort of. In the world of past, present, future tenses, was is a beautiful thing. That, that was John. He said that Greg's lawyer will be able to get him released as early as tomorrow morning. Maybe I can help out. One of the missing kids, Jason Scott, is the son of a federal judge in Miami who also happens to be a very good friend of mine. These are his dental records and uh, everything. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Just, all right. You know, you do this stuff day in and day out, and sometimes you forget you're dealing with real people. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I went to church last night, lit a candle, burnt myself in the process, and a lot of practice. But I just prayed that when we find those bodies, Jason's not one of them. Mario. Hey, George, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Uh, Grace wanted me to tell you that the DNA report came in, and that skin sample did not come from Robert Lee Gregg. Yeah, but that still may not be enough to hold him. Hey, uh, let me call Miami. Uh, yeah, please. Background check on Susan Marshall. <laughs> Glad to see you're in a better mood than you were this afternoon. I'm sorry. It just seemed like this case has been going nowhere, but it looks like we finally have some pretty good news. Susan, that's the last I want to hear about serial killers. Sorry. The office is closed. Come here. <laughs> what the hell was that? Stay in the car. No, I'm not staying in the car. Dial 911 and don't move. here 621 Chambers Street no Chambers Street Richard? Susan, I'm so sorry. The uh, victim's wounds seem to be inflicted with a serrated knife moving in a left or right direction. Richard Russell is right-handed. So Agent Malone knows about Richard and me. I didn't tell him. Please believe me, I didn't say a word. 
can take him now. So the victim's mom hasn't been informed. I should probably go no, make no, that. No, look, somebody else can do that, okay? I talked to the locals. We'll assume jurisdiction because of an assault on a federal officer. We're putting a description of Russell over the air. Do you have any recent photos? No, I threw them all out. Where does he live? I want to put a stake out on the place. I don't know. He moved after he broke up. Russell was still on medication, so the health department should have an address on file. How did you know about Susan and Russell? It was on George's computer. Did you ask him to pull it up? Yeah. He was at Greg's house this morning. I, it looked exactly like what she had said, a disgruntled boyfriend who didn't want to let go. She said he wasn't a threat. But it just didn't feel right. This is Russell's last known address. Nobody's been in here since last night. But all entrances covered. If Russell had to come back, we'd have nailed him. This one's still full. Prescribed over a month ago. He stopped taking them. Maybe that's why he went off the deep end. Ulcerated, all the same. One's missing. I'll have Grace do a comparison on the victim's wounds. taking you off the case, Susan. This has nothing to do with your qualifications as an agent. It has everything to do with it. Would you pull John Grant off a case because you thought his safety was at risk? It's my responsibility never to put an agent in needless jeopardy. Robert Lee Gregg is the issue here, not Susan Marshall. Finding his victim so we can make sure he never repeats his crimes again is the issue. I'm well aware of what the issues are, Susan. And I understand how much this case means to you. To and from work by another agent. We won't empower him by caving into his jealousy. Well, I don't, I don't think that it's jealousy in the usual sense. I mean, it's almost as if he's reaching for something that's out of his grasp. I guess that would be you. What if I offer myself as a target, try to lure him out into the open? I can't allow that. Well, the longer he's off his medication, the more erratic his behavior is going to become. I mean, he could start lashing out at other enemies, real or imagined. He isn't likely to flee, even though he knows he's wanted for murder. No, no. He'll want to be close to Susan. Wherever she is, he'll be. Open it. Right. Okay. I think I'll go check inside. Thanks. Florida cordially requests that the state of Georgia act with all deliberate speed and provide the presence of Robert Lee Gregg. That's a copy. The original's being filed with the AG as we speak. That was quick. Yeah, well, Gregg's attorneys are going to have a cow, but, you know, with all the Michigas, it uh, should keep him locked up for at least a couple weeks. Hey, any more from Gregg's foster homes? Yeah, nothing specific, though. He went through about four homes, all people who took in children to supplement their incomes. There weren't even families. I mean, there was no love, no emotional support. I'm from Brooklyn. You know, if the guy killed six people, I don't care from his lack of love or emotional support. I want him locked up. I didn't kill those people. I told that to those other police officers. Uh, I'm not a police officer, Mr. Gray. Oh. So you're here to evaluate me? You don't have to say anything you don't want to say. I'm sure it'll be fine. I see here that your record of community services... 
Thanks for the extradition order. Como to be a chair. I mean, even dating back to when you were a teenager, you volunteered at local hospitals. You delivered meals to the hospital. I can't even get my daughter to clean her room. <laughs> <laughs> Who instilled this sense of service in you? One of my parents. Oh. One of your foster parents. Yes. And when we were very young, you won a number of awards from animal protection organizations? I love animals. Oh, do you have any pets now? Mr. Greg, do, do you have any pets? I'm allergic. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, and when did you develop this allergy to animals, Mr. Greg? Oh, it was, uh, that was years ago. Uh, I didn't have any pets since then. Well, how old would you say you were at the time? How were you, little boy, eight, nine? You would have been living with uh, Ernest and Joanne Boyer. Did the Boyers have pets, Mr. Gray? I didn't want to mess. So when you brought your pets to the Boyers' home... They were dirty sometimes. I see. And what did Mr. and Mrs. Boyer do when the pets were dirty? Mr. Boyer was a wonderful man. I have to believe that his foster father killed all of his pets. He was no stranger to killing animals. He owned this plant. They used to process six tons of beef a day in here. How long has this joint been closed? Went out of business three years ago. According to this, power's still hooked up. Greg's way of getting back at his foster father. I can't see his face. We'll know soon enough. Looks like your first major case ends in the W. How's it feel? Feel kind of empty, actually. Welcome to the club. People don't start hating me till they know me. Bailey, you need to start taking this seriously. He was here, Agent Malone. I think we can drop the Agent Malone bit, okay? He put that rat in your mailbox. It could have been a prank by some kid. The thing could have crawled in there itself. And shut the door behind it. <sighs> John Grant. Yeah, what time was that? Want a drink? You want to get the I want to help. Well, having a drink helps. Okay, You're right. I'm fine. You're all making a major deal about this, and I'm fine. Look, Richard Russell is imbalanced, and he's becoming more so by the minute. Yeah. No. Well, I've been called a lot of things in my time. Thief isn't one of them. Well, Mitch was a thief too, wasn't he? I'll drop it by on the way. And look, if he's even seen you with Susan, he probably thinks that you've stolen her from him. Thanks, Joe. He could think that. Okay. We're set. We'll have agents outside the house on eight-hour rotations until we get it. Call him back and cancel. What are we doing? Cancel it, John. This guy doesn't have the guts to make a serious move on me. And even if he does, I wish he hadn't. I'm not going to tie up your personnel on this. Cancel the surveillance. Let 
Look, it's late, and we've all got a busy day tomorrow, so. See ya. You know, I really love you, Bailey, but you can be such a schmuck sometimes. I mean, this whole matcha thing is really great if you're alone, but you're not. If he thinks that you've taken Susan, he may try and exact his revenge on Janet. If you're a target, then I think that she is too. And believe it or not, there are a lot of people around you who really care about you. So, I would think twice before you refuse protection. So, for everyone's sake, yours, mine, everyone's, you're on the next plane to Baltimore. The hell I am. Please, Janet, I'm in no mood to argue. Good, because I'm in no mood to leave. <clears throat> I thought you said this Russell character was stalking one of your agents. What does that have to do with me? Oh, God. Somehow he found out where I live, and I have no idea what else he knows. I'm not taking any chances with your safety. He's already killed one person. If he's that dangerous, come with me. You know I can't do that. I'm asking you to come with me. Some things never change. I guess I was stupid to think they just might. It won't always be like this. That's what you said 20 years ago. I'll have Ariana stay with the Jacobsons. Bailey! Here's the court documents on Greg. Agent Susan Marshall, Janet Malone. To, uh, have a problem of mine become an issue in your life, in Agent Malone's, I'm so sorry. She's leaving for Baltimore in one hour. I know we'll get them soon, and this will all be over. I hope so. So do I. When you get back, we'll have dinner. Chateaubriand, medium rare. Mm. Nice to have met you. I'm sorry, Mario. Couldn't be a mistake, huh? Mm -hmm. You too good? They're a perfect match. Thanks, Chris. Why don't we go open a seashell joint down in Key West? And you think they need another one? Yeah. Bailey said they're gonna file murder charges. You know, DNA said they matched the skin in the kitchen to one of the victims. I guess that's something. He was a talented kid, this Jason. He was a photographer. At least you'll be able to give his family closure. Yeah. Something. He was old school as father, the judge. He never quite understood his son's preference. Maybe I can understand that. I guess I'm kind of old school myself. But right before I got on the uh, plane, his dad says to me, you see him alive, you tell him I love him. I'm sorry. I got to get on a plane. Uh, take care of yourself. Okay. Maybe I'll call you. Okay. Okay. But she wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for me. You're not to blame for it, Russell is. Who's to blame is not the point. I can't let you make yourself a target for me. It's not like I'd be out there alone. That's not the point. Something went wrong. We don't even know if you'd go for it. Sam said he could be manipulated, right? I'm the one he's wanted all along. You know, if something happened to you, or Janet... Nothing's gonna happen. Malone. 
Hit line three, tell me to trace this call. This is Agent Marshall. We need to trace a call in the Agent Malone's office. You took what was rightfully mine. You took Susan. I didn't take Susan. That's all right, Malone. Called to say I don't hold a grudge. The best thing now is for you to tell us where you are. Best thing? Best thing for who? For you, for Susan. Tell us where you are and we can talk about it. Out in the world, Malone. I'm out in the world. The longer this takes, the harder it's gonna be. Oh, it won't take that much longer. What do you mean, what won't take much longer? Things happen in their own timetable. What things? What are you talking about? Give us a chance to help you, Richard. Susan wants to help you. Oh, that's nice. It's gone. Does he really think he could take Susan away and I wouldn't do anything about it? What kind of man does he think I am? Don't tell me it's impossible. I don't want to hear it's impossible. Keep trying and call me back. I say they can't trace it. He wasn't on long enough. So, he's just out there in the world. The world's a big place. If you let me, I can shrink it down to size. We've been through this, Susan. The answer is no. Janet's still in the air. I've got agents waiting at the gate. I'm going to help you, whether you want it or not, like you helped me. What do you mean? I know you don't remember this, but I met you at a career placement seminar when I was in college. I would have never become an agent if it wasn't for that. Aren't you glad? Yes, I am. Malone. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, next time Russell calls, I'll keep on longer. Richard Russell is mentally unstable, on an emotional precipice. But all of the pictures were arranged precisely, almost with a perfect symmetry. Maybe he put these up during one of his lucid phases when he was able to function normally. Mm. All the pictures were dated, so we can get a timeline to the relationship. Beginning, everything's great. And then here in the middle, things start to fall apart. And then there's this. Reconciliation? Just so there wasn't any. I don't know, maybe it's just the way he wanted to remember. I've never been to Baltimore. Susan said that we'd go there someday. Chesapeake is beautiful, she said. Maybe when all this is over, we'll go. I've seen that stadium on TV. That one that's supposed to look old. The field is real grass. I think baseball should be played on real grass. And football, too. Janet? It's Susan. You haven't heard from her? No, no, they can't land. Baltimore's fogged in. Listen, I have good news. I found him. You found Russell. I'm so sorry for all the trouble I've caused. Susan, where are you? I'm gonna end this. Tell me where you are. I'm at the Rialto. I can handle this myself. I'm gonna take care of all our problems so we can start over. Susan. Susan. Starting with January 28th, when they first met, on a virtual straight line all the way through to March 17th. You know, this one is April 12th. Are you sure? But they'd already broken up by then, remember? Why would she be smiling for her? He could have taken it while they were still together and then had it developed three weeks later. Mm, he was too attached to her. He wouldn't have waited three hours. 
I knew this would happen, baby. <laughs> Richard. I knew that you really wanted me. You were right, baby. You were right. Now you just, you just tell me that it's going to be for always. Always. Not like this last time. No, baby. Always. <laughs> Okay, how many times do I have to tell you? You are sick. You should have never stopped taking those pills. You told me to. I did everything that you told me to do. Don't try to put this on me now. You, you told me to grab Malone's wife, and I did it. This is all because of you. You think you could ever measure up to Bailey Malone? I don't think so. <laughs> Crazier than I thought. Don't you ever say that. Stop! Let her go. Stop! Put it down. She loves me. Get an ambulance. He took this picture of her because she wanted him to. Wasn't the relationship open? Well, that's what she told us. But what if she didn't tell him? What if she was just stringing him along? Why do you think she would string along a guy who's clearly unbalanced? Because she could get him to do anything, and we would never suspect her. It wasn't Richard reaching for the unattainable. It was Susan. She's been using him. Do you think she got him to kill Mitch? Well, she probably manipulated him into being there, but I think that she may have killed him. Here's the confidential medical report you asked for. Almost a year ago, Susan developed polycystic ovary syndrome, and it left her sterile. So, okay, Susan is the obsessed one, reaching out for the unattainable. But the unattainable what? What do you mean she never got off the plane? It was flight 417 out of Hartsfield. No, then one of your agents must have missed her. Look, I want every available agent on this. Janet? What the hell are you doing here? Making you Chateaubriand. Medium rare, just the way you like it. Susan, what is this? Well, someone has to cook for you now that she's gone. It smells terrific. Thank you. Open that Cabernet, will you, sweetie? It should breathe for a good half hour. Sweet of you to do this. Look after me till Johnny gets back. Oh, she's not coming back. I could see the way you looked at me. Same way I was looking at you. Those moments were so precious. They made me realize this was the way it was meant to be. We had to keep it a secret. Of course. No one could know. Not till she was gone. We should tell her about us. She should know. Where is she now? I've thought about this ever since the first day. I'm sorry I didn't remember. It was stupid of me. It's okay, I shouldn't have mentioned it. You've always had so many more important things on your mind. Tell me what you're gonna do. I don't want to hear her name anymore. Okay? It's her fault we've been apart all this time. 